Welcome back to the Midwest Dream Car Collection. I'm Doug Malone. I'm the Director of Vehicle Operations here at the museum. Today we're going to be telling you a little bit about our 1953 Corvette that we're really fortunate to have here in our collection. The 1953 Corvette uh, was the beginning of a very storied uh, automotive make, as many of you know. And uh, kind of how it got its footing was after World War II, a lot of our soldiers uh, overseas had been driving uh, very sporty little cars such as Ferraris and Porsches and cars of that type and they really got to like the lightweight nimbleness of these cars and so they had them imported back to the United States uh, to drive and so of course General Motors uh, caught on to that and uh, even Harley Earl himself uh, liked the cars, the sporty cars and really wanted to develop something like this for uh, General Motors and for the Chevrolet brand. So. In 1951, this vision started to take hold into what would become known as Project Opal at the time. I'll kind of walk around a little bit about the car here and um, some unique features of it. The construction of the car was fiberglass. This was something very new. Another car had been made of fiberglass uh, at that time in the United States and uh, uh, made the car uh, very lightweight as well as uh, it was easy to form. Uh, part of the reason they went with fiberglass was uh, during the Korean War, a lot of our metal was being used for the war effort. It was in short demand, so uh, by using fiberglass, it was less expensive, and like I said, it really uh, conformed easy uh, to the body curves that were going to be featured in the new Corvette. If you look at the front of the car here, it's really sporty. Uh, nothing like this had been around at the time. This car was introduced at the Motorama in 1953 at the Waldorf Astoria, New York. In January, the public just loved it. Uh, Chevrolet really wanted to get on board and get it going, uh, become a production car in 1953. So a little bit of a hurried production, which the result was they only made three, 300 of these cars the first year. So they're very ultra rare, uh, but we're fortunate, like I said, to have one of them in our possession here. So I noticed the stone guards on the front of the headlights here. Uh, that's from uh, race cars at the time had those to prevent the headlights from getting broke when. They might get rocks flung up into them during the race. So that's kind of a race car type feature. Very toothy grill down here. Of course, this is back before any kind of regulations on having to have uh, certain type of bumpers on cars uh, for safety. So very lightweight and this chrome little trim pieces on here and kind of a little guard here. And note the emblem on the front of the car here. This kind of got a little bit of a story behind it. The Corvette first envisioned the emblem on the 53 Corvette. Uh, they had the crossed flags like you see here, uh, one being the checkered flag for racing, which very much a part of what the, the whole concept behind the Corvette would be. And then the other flag was the United States flag. Well, once they first got that design put together, then they found out that uh, 10 years prior to that, the United States had passed a law that you could not use the U.S. flag on any kind of emblems or advertising promotions as such. They thought, well, what can we put on this other flag? They decided they'd maybe use a crest of some type. So they looked at uh, Louis Chevrolet, the family name of Louis Chevrolet, to see if there was a family crest that could possibly be used. But there was not one. So then they looked at the name Chevrolet itself being French. Uh, so they came up with the uh, fleur de lis uh, emblem on the, on the flag here, and then the Chevrolet bow tie. So that's what ended up being on the, the cross flags on the emblem of the 1953 Corvette then. Notice on the front we do have parking lights and turn signal lights on 1953 car. Very simple lines, uh, very clean, sporty look to the car. Wheel covers were a uh, full disc wheel cover uh, with two studded spinner caps on them. Um, very simple trim on the sides. Script there. And you notice if we flip up the gas cap here, you can see actually the construction of the fiberglass. Uh, this was all hand formed hand laid fiberglass at the time uh, and you can actually see it unfinished inside there. Another feature for the 53 Corvette, there were no outside door handles. You actually had to physically reach in and unlock the door from the inside door handle. Um, it gave it a very slick appearance. Now you'll notice on the side of the car, and I'm going to sit in here in a minute, I'm six foot three and about 230 pounds. There's a challenge for me to fit inside this car. Uh, but I'm going to get in here because I want to be able to show you some features on the inside of the car. So we slip in here somehow. There's no tilt steering on this car, obviously, but you can see it really it cuts in right down there. But I'm in here and uh, I could very much drive this car and enjoy it. Hmm. Uh, so someday I hope to be able to do that. But uh, uh, very sporty dashboard on the car. 
Um, only two options that were available in the Corvette was an AM radio with the Wonder Bar, and this car has it, as well as a heater. Full array of gauges, obviously your speedometer over here, an odometer, have a tachometer here, and then your typical fuel temperature, uh, battery charge, oil, and clock gauges here, cigarette lighter, and then uh, you have your choke and your defroster on and off switch, light switch and wipers over on this side. Uh, this lever right here, when you pull that down, you'll notice on the cowl of the car that opens up a vent for some air to be able to pass through into the cabin of the car. And then of course your horn ring here with the Chevrolet uh, emblem, uh, cross flag emblem in here in the middle. Um, this down here is a transmission lever. 1953 Corvette came with one transmission option. That was the two-speed power glide transmission. Uh, Chevrolet at the time did not have a manual transmission that could handle uh, the horsepower of this car engine, which we'll look at here in just a moment. So it came standard with the automatic transmission, uh, which is all controlled up through this lever right here, I should say. The mirror on this car, uh, typically most cars would have been mounted on the windshield. Of course, they wanted to have a, an unobstructed view there, which is understandable, but for someone of my height, this mirror does not adjust up enough to be able to, to really see out the back. If I scoot down, scooch down, I guess I could, could use it. But uh, uh, Anyway, sporty appearance to the dashboard. Um, something we discovered on this car is that there are actually two hood release uh, knobs on this. Uh, so if I pull this lever over here, and I have to reach over here and pull this one as well to unlock the other side of the hood. And then in a moment, we'll walk around and open up the hood and take a look inside. Uh, seats are adorned in a red, I believe it's a vinyl. And the car only came in 1953 in polo white. So the exteriors of all 1953 were polo white with red interiors. This button here, if we push that, that's going to open up this little cover is where then the black fabric cloth for the convertible roof is. And that just lifts up and pulls out. I'm not gonna fall all the way out, but um, would fold out and pull up for the top. Here you have your dual exhaust ports coming out the back. Here again, very simple light lines in the bumper. Almost a rocket appearance in the tail lights. I look at these little fins here, and I kind of wonder, this is a Harley Earl design. And, uh, by 1949 when the fins came out, so I kind of wonder if that's not a little nod to the tail fin on the cars, but it uh, really gives it a, a rocket appearance. Plastic dome cover over where the license plate goes. And then to get into the trunk, you have to go way down here. You can see, pretty limited space in here, but uh, not uh, need, not a lot of room, need for a lot of room in this car. And then underneath this cover is a wood cover that goes over where the spare tire would be. You have to unbolt it here, and I'm not gonna do that now, but the spare tires underneath, underneath that port. Underneath the hood here is where we find the uh, Blue Flame inline six engine. This is an overhead valve, six cylinder. Uh, very underpowered for a car of this type at the time, but Cadillac did not yet have a small block V8. It wouldn't come out until 1955, but um, they were in a hurry to get the car out, and uh, so they just used an engine that they pretty much had available. They did have three single barrel Carter carburetors, downdraft carburetors on the car, and a compression ratio of about eight, eight to one. So it yielded about 150 horsepower. Um, which today doesn't sound like an awful lot, but 1953, that was a pretty fast car. About a zero to 60 speed, I think of around 11 seconds, uh, comparable with about a minivan today, but uh, 1953, that was pretty quick. Just a real sporty uh, car. So anyway, this is our 1953 Corvette, and I uh, hope that you'll stop by the Midwest Dream Car Collection in the near future and check it out along as, as well as our other Corvettes that we have here on the display floor, like the 1963 split window. And then we just took the delivery of a brand new C8 by 2020 Corvette. So just some wonderful Corvettes that we have here. Uh, I think uh, that you'd be impressed with the collections. Please stop on.